All right. Good afternoon. Good evening, folks. As we jump into our uh, Passover service, some people call it a Maundy Thursday service. Um, we're going to do something a little special tonight. So um, as we jump into it tonight, we're, we're going to be partaking of the Lord's Supper. And so as we talk about the Lord's Supper and what it means and what some of the biblical roots are of the Lord's Supper, I want to encourage you that if you are a believer saved by grace, if you have given your life to Jesus Christ and you know that you're saved, I want to encourage you to go ahead and, and sit aside some bread, uh, grab you some juice, Feel free to make do with what you have, right? I'm not going to put a whole lot of restrictions on this. Make do with what you have so that we can do Passover together. This is one of the one of the ordinances that just absolutely draws us together as the body of Christ. And you'll see why um, as we jump into this tonight. So I want to say welcome. Thank you guys for joining with us. I want to also encourage you to like, share, and especially comment. So feel free to comment below um, where you're from, where you're joining us from, because we have people all over the U.S. and really all over the world who are joining us for these services. So I want to encourage you to, to join us and to comment, like, share, all that stuff as we jump into this time of the Lord's Supper tonight. Let's open up with a word of prayer and we will get so we'll do some praise and worship to get us started. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for who you are and how you love us. Lord God, I thank you for the way that you save us by your grace. Thank you so much for what you did for us on the cross. Lord, as we prepare our hearts and our minds for Easter this week, and as we're going through uh, tonight celebrating the Lord's Supper, your supper, what you gave us, Lord, I pray that you would um, bless this time of teaching and praise. And Lord, may we be changed more into your image as we do this tonight. Lord God, we love you, we praise you, and we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. So Landon, take it away. Sing together here tonight. Uh, start with uh, This is Amazing Grace, and then sing a Revelation song. So uh, join me. I can't hear you. Wish I could, but uh, join me together as we sing. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory. The King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Who brings our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, the King of glory, who rules the nations. With truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Let's sing, Worthy is the Lamb Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. 
Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Oh, this is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You laid down your life. That I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Let's sing, worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder. Blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Let's sing together. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder. And filled with wonder. Awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, if the words were jacked up on your screen as we were singing those songs, it is completely my fault because I started singing and I was not hitting the button like I was supposed to. So, my bad. Hope you were able to worship along with us as we did that. So tonight, we are talking about the Lord's Supper. We're going to be jumping right into talking about the Lord's Supper. So if you have your Bibles with you, um, we're going to be in Matthew 26. We're going to be jumping into Matthew 26. And so 
Um, we're going to be looking at the first Lord's Supper, Matthew 26, 26. Um, but as we get into that, I want to set the scene. We're going to come back to this. So as we're talking about it, we're talking about this idea that um, so Jesus has, has uh, sent his disciples ahead of him to this upper room, this large upper room, and he's gotten it ready for them to partake, for them to have this Lord's Supper together. And so think about what's going on. Like they've, they've been together for three years. They've, Jesus has been predicting his death and his burial and his resurrection. Jesus has, has been pouring into and investing into these men for three years, every day together doing ministry. They've seen him heal the sick and give sight to the blind and, and cure leprosy and feed thousands of people. They've seen him do all kinds of miraculous things. Three of them were on the Mount of Transfiguration and saw, saw this huge, amazing miracle. And they've, they've witnessed all these amazing things about Jesus and spent time in the presence of Jesus every single day. And so the Passover, which is one of, which is by far the biggest, the, the biggest miracle that is celebrated throughout the whole Old Testament is, has turned into this celebration, this annual celebration of the Passover. God gives him instructions in Exodus, in Exodus 12 on how to, how to take the Passover and how to do this celebration. And so as they're doing it, the disciples don't even get it. And so we're going we're gonna to be talking about it a little bit. Jesus knows going into this that this is his last Passover here on earth. There is so much mentally weighing on him, and there's so much that he, is, he has taught them, but I sh I'm sure there's more that he wishes he could pour into these disciples. And so I want you to get a sense of the emotion and the, and the tension that would have been in the room as, as Jesus is, is battling with what's about to happen and what's going to happen, and his disciples are feeling the excitement and the energy that would have been in Jerusalem at this time as people are preparing for the Passover, as they've, they've gone through all these different customs to get ready for this moment when they're they're going to sit down and they're going to they're going to take the the unleavened bread and the and the wine and and there would have been a whole a whole system a whole uh, ritual to it where they would have said prayers in Hebrew and they would have had a whole feast. And so it wasn't just bread and wine. There was a whole feast that went with it. And we're going to talk about that a little bit tonight as we jump into Exodus chapter 12. But I want you to get a feeling for the emotionally charged atmosphere of what's going on in this room, because this is one of those, this is one of those pivotal moments. Um, there are so many of these pivotal moments in the Gospels, but this is one of those pivotal moments where they're sitting down and they will reflect back on this moment. And there's so much um, from the past, the things that have happened in the Old Testament and things that happened even before this moment in the New Testament and things that will happen in the future. All of this kind of comes together and is reflective of what's going to happen with Jesus on the cross. And this moment is the foreshadowing that kind of brings all of that Together, So this is a big moment, emotionally charged, exciting, a lot going on. So for us to get a better understanding, so we go from Jerusalem's upper room where, where Jesus is meeting with the disciples to have this Passover meal. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 12. So when we look at Exodus chapter 12, there is a, the, the Jews in Exodus chapter 12, the Jews are, have been enslaved for 400 years to the Egyptians. There has been, so God has spoken to Moses through the, the, the burning bush and God has called Moses to be the prophet that would come in and set his people free and get them out of slavery. And as he's wrestled with this and they've gone through all these different plagues and, and it says in some passages it says that, that Pharaoh hardened his own heart and other passages says that the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and, and they go back and forth and back and forth and we find ourselves at this apex, this, this one miracle, this one sign that would, that would end it all that would get Egypt that would get Egypt to let Israel go and Israel would be freed from slavery and they would eventually make their way into the promised land. And as we as we jump into this in Exodus chapter 12, realize that what we talk about right here in Exodus chapter 12 reverberates throughout the rest of the Old Testament. Every time God is dealing with the people, he says, he says, I am the God who brought you out of Egypt. I am the God who did this. This moment of exodus, of exiting from slavery and coming into God's promised land is the, one of the biggest seasons of foreshadowing that we'll see later on um, in the Bible. And so, so right here we see Exodus 12. God gives instructions. He's setting them up for this last plague. And this last plague, God tells, the, God tells Moses to, to tell the elders, to tell the people, basically, I want you to go get a perfect, spotless, one-year-old lamb. 
uh, or goat. And he says, I want you to get this lamb and I want you to, it has to be perfect, not a blemish on it. Nothing is wrong with this lamb. It is a perfect spotless lamb. It has to be perfect and blemish free. And then from there, I want you to take this perfect, spotless, blemish-free lamb, and you're going to, and they kept it for five days. So they got it on the 10th day of the month, and they, they slaughtered it on the 15th day of the month. And then they would take it, and he says, don't eat any of the meat raw. Don't eat any of the meat boiled. He's like, I want you to intentionally roast this lamb. Roast the lamb over a fire, which is a way that you would have done it in a hurry. So God's saying, hurry up and get this done because you're going to eat in a hurry and you're going to leave in a hurry. You're going to make a mass exodus out of Egypt in a hurry. So they eat in a hurry. And he says to him, he says, look, I want you to take a branch of hyssop. So this is kind of, this is kind of key because we see this come back later on. I want you to take a branch of hyssop and I want you to take the blood from the lamb and I want you to dip that branch of hyssop in the blood and I want you to paint the doorposts and the lentils of your house, the, the, the head of it. I want you to paint the door frame of your house with the blood of the lamb. So what happened is, is during the Passover, the death angel passes over Egypt, passes over Egypt, but every house that had the blood painted on the door frame, the death angel passed over and no one was harmed. If the blood was not applied to the door frame, the firstborn in every house died. The firstborn male in every house died, including Pharaoh's house. So the most powerful man in all of Egypt, in the most powerful nation in the world, could not stop God from killing his firstborn son. Could not stop the death angel from killing his firstborn son because he did not have the lamb, the blood of the lamb, applied to the doorposts of his house. So we see in Exodus 12, God sets it up. And so after, after the death angel passes over, it says that, that, the, that the, the, the Egyptians woke up in a mighty roar and there was a wailing and crying and weeping. And they, they basically kicked the Israelites out. And as they were kicking them out, they were sending them with gold and with animals. They were giving them things, basically saying, just take it and leave. Just get out. And so there was this mass exodus. And so not only do the slaves get freedom, but it's almost like the slaves were able to plunder their, the people who had enslaved them as they're leaving. So God And God had told them this would happen. So as the nation is leaving, he says, look, in, the, in this last final act, I want you to get this lamb, spotless, perfect lamb. I want you to slaughter this lamb. I want you to eat this lamb with the unleavened bread in a hurry. Um, and he literally tells them to have their tunics tucked into their belt and to have their staff in their hand. Eat like you're ready to make a dash for it. And so they do. And we see that he then they take they paint the they paint their, their doors with this. The death angel passes over. There's a big weeping and mourning, and the people leave. So we see this picture of the Lamb of God, this Lamb who who comes and um, it is the blood of the lamb that saved the people in those houses. Then we come to John 1, 29. So in John chapter 1, verse 29, it's John the Baptist. So we're kind of flashing way ahead, way ahead. John the Baptist is baptizing people in the wilderness. And he says he's preparing the way of the Lord. But in John 1, 29, he says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So John sees Jesus coming. John sees Jesus coming to, to the river to be baptized. And, he, and as this crowd of people is around him, he sees Jesus and his response is, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He's identifying Jesus as the Lamb of God. And then from there, and then from there we come to John 19.29. And at this point, we're flashing forward to the end of Jesus' life. So we're at the end of Jesus' life, and, and he's on the cross, and he's, he's about to, to be done. And one of the most famous things that Jesus says on the cross is, to tell us die, it is finished. And that's in verse 30. But in verse 29, it says that they took a branch of hyssop. They took a branch of hyssop, and they put a sponge with sour wine on it, and they offered it up to Jesus to moisten his lips. And after moistening his lips with that sour wine, does he say, to tell us that it is finished, that Jesus' work on the cross was finished in that moment. 
So before I move on to, to this last passage, I want you to get that, that basically the branch of hyssop that was used to, there's another connection to Jesus. The branch of hyssop that was used in Exodus to paint the doorpost is also used to hand Jesus the sponge of sour wine so that he can make this proclamation of forever and ever and ever it is finished. Sin is paid for. The debt has been paid. It is done. It is over. And then again, referring back to John 1:29. Jesus is the spotless Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God. He is the one who was slaughtered. He is the one who took our, our sin and our shame. He's the one who paid the price that we deserve to pay. He's the one. He's the one whose blood, if it is applied to your life and to my life, he's the one who his blood makes us clean. He's the one who shed his blood so that we could be forgiven. So when we talk about the blood of the new covenant that we're going to talk about here in a second, there is, it is the blood of Jesus Christ who made that possible. So I, I want you to get this, that, that this has been God's plan since the beginning of time, that Jesus, this foreshadowing that happens here where where. Tons of Israelites were set free from slavery. This moment was ultimately to foreshadow this moment because in this moment, God set the, set the people of Israel free from their physical slavery and captivity and set them free to go into the promised land sometime later. Whereas for you and I, for you and I, there is a moment where if we have put our faith and trust in the Lamb of God, the blood of the Lamb has been applied to our lives, and we will be set free. This was the first exodus, but there will be a second exodus when we who were enslaved to our sins will be set free for all of eternity, and we will go into the ultimate promised land, the new Jerusalem, and we will be with him forever in eternity, where there will be no more tears, no more pain, no more suffering, no more coronavirus. There will be none of this, and we will be with him for eternity. So all of this, all of this is wrapped up in this moment, in this moment that we're about to grab a hold of. But before we do, I want you to hear this one last passage from Revelation chapter 5. And we're going to sing one more song right before we go into it. Revelation chapter 5. When he took, starting in verse 8, when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and a golden bowl filled with incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slaughtered and you purchased people for God by your blood from every tribe and language and people and nation. You made them a kingdom and a priest to our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and also of the living creatures and of the elders. Their number was countless thousands, plus thousands of thousands. They said with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slaughtered to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, under the earth, on the sea, and everything in them say, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb of God forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshiped. Oh 
crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. High and lifted up. Jesus, Son of God. The darling of heaven crucified. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. So as we get into this time, go ahead and grab your bread and your juice or whatever you got to make do. Um, So all of this, all of God's sovereign plan to bring all of this together, that he, that Jesus is the lamb of the God, uh, the lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world, who paid the price for us. All of that comes together. Worthy is the lamb. Matthew 26, starting in verse 26. As they were eating, Jesus took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat it. This is my body. Then he took a cup. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And they took it and they drank. Before we do this next part, I want to I want to help you understand why this means so much. If you if you don't necessarily get it, if you if it's not something that you a tradition you understand. When you've when you realize that you are a great sinner, which I did. When you realize that you're a great sinner, And you realize that you were saved by an even greater Savior. And you realize that in this moment, when we talk tomorrow about the breaking of his body and what he went through on the cross and the shedding of his blood and what that meant for you, that you you don't have to be bound by the chains of your sin and you you don't have to spend eternity in hell and you don't, you don't have to be enslaved to sin. You can be set free right now and free for all of eternity because of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross. And this is a representation of, his break, of the breaking of his flesh and the shedding of his blood for our sins and that's what this is all about and in verse 30 it says after singing a hymn they went out to mount to the mount of olives 
So after, after the, this Lord's Supper, after, after the breaking of the bread and the, the drinking of the wine, he, as he wraps things up, he's, he's going to the next area, this, this next phase where they're going to go to the Mount of Olives and pray. But before they do, he says, it says, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So we're going to sing one more song, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. And so I invite you to sing along with us as we, um, as we sing Nothing But the Blood. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious that makes me white as snow oh, no other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus for my pardon this I see nothing but the blood of y'all so much for joining us tonight in this Lord's Supper uh, event that we did. I, I, I'm, I hope that this touched you as much as it did me. And um, as we wrap this up tonight, I want to um, encourage you tomorrow we will be doing a Good Friday service at noon. We'll be right back here. And we're going to be talking about kind of 
what happened and how that went through the how Jesus went through some of the things that he went through and what that means and and give us a little bit more to reflect on as we get closer to Easter. So we had a great time tonight with the Lord's Supper. We're going to have another good time tomorrow as we talk about the cross and and what Jesus went through and hopefully give us some stuff to reflect on as we as we go into Easter. So love you guys. Continue to comment, like, share, and we'll see you tomorrow.